WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888 888- 922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, 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 It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you. I would say by myself, but I mean, Ted Efall is in the other room, so it's not technically true. But uh, here on the air on my own, Lucas is en route. Uh, At least I believe he is uh, getting me a text uh, about... Uh, a little over 20 minutes ago, saying that he had just clocked out of work and is uh, efforting to get over here, but said he might not make the show. So we'll see. It's uh, very up in the air so that if he doesn't show up, there's, I guess, uh, an out or something like that. Yeah, now he's going to be mad at me for calling him out on the air. That's pretty much how that's going to go, I guess. I don't know. Maybe he can call in if he's listening, which you'd think he would be, considering he is a part of the show. Man, I'm... <laughs> I'm just bringing the heat today. I'm I'm just I'm bringing the heat because the because uh, Mother Nature isn't because it's like only sixty some odd degrees outside and it's still I mean it's early September but it's still technically summer. I don't know, but things uh, certainly heated up in the world of wrestling, uh, especially this past Monday on Raw with the uh, back and forth battle that uh, was John Cena and Roman Reigns setting up for their match coming up in a few weeks at No Mercy. And, well, I could try to do this justice by talking about it, but uh, and I, as much as I wanted to air the thing in its entirety, it, it would have been an entire segment just on its own. So here is uh, an edited uh, down version, probably about mm, half the length, I'd say, but about uh, eight minutes or so of uh, John Cena and Roman Reigns. And uh, I'll just let the words speak for themselves here. John Cena versus Roman Reigns. This is WrestleMania worthy, but Kurt Angle... I like your swag, man. You're ready to do it. I'm ready to do it. They're ready to see it. We're going to do it at No Mercy Live on the WWE Network. This is the reason I came to Monday Night Raw to be in this ring face to face with a man who says he he runs the yard. And if you don't believe that, just ask him. He'll tell you. And why not? Because ever since Roman Reigns has stepped foot in a ring, he hasn't just been the blue chip prospect. Roman Reigns has been the blue chip prospect that has been protected against anyone and everyone that steps in his path. And then there's me. And we've been through a whole heck of a lot together. And you know me, and I know you, and you know I got zero Fs to give. And I'm the one dude ain't no protection from. And that is why I want to fight Roman Reigns because I know that Roman Reigns don't want to fight me. I don't want to fight you. That's what's in your head. You may not understand this because probably no one's ever told you this before, John, but you're not as big of a deal as you think you are. I don't care what you've done or what you plan to do. I've done something you'll never do. I retired The Undertaker at WrestleMania. So maybe it's not that I don't want to fight you. Maybe I just don't need to. You're right. No, he's right. He's right. You, you, you don't need to fight me. You are the high exalted Roman Reigns. You are the big dog. Everybody back there knows it. Everybody out here still kind of trying to figure it out. You see, Roman, I'm what you would call a polarizing figure every week. There are people that that cheer because they stand for what I believe in. And then there are people that boo because they don't. And then every single week you can audibly hear those people so desperately wanting me to change the content of my character. Maybe a little heel turn. 
But with, with you, it's, it's different. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this. They go back and forth with you because when they look at you, they see what I see. A cheap ass, corporately created John Cena bootleg. This chump right here, he ain't the guy. Dude, you're just a guy. A guy trying so desperately to fill shoes that you never will. Listen carefully, young man. I'm not the undertaker. I'm not a battered veteran at the end of his career with a bad hip. I am the fastest, strongest, and hungriest that I have ever been in my entire life. And the reason you won't sign that is because you know if you do, your Roman Empire... He did it again. He's the king of this. He can take anything and spin it. That's what he does. But it blows my mind that he stands out here and he runs his mouth and he's talking about y'all boo him because y'all want him to be a bad guy? They boo you because first of all, you suck. Hey, uh, uh, according to them, so does he, but that's okay, he want a gold medal. Just shut up for a while, how about that? And second of all, go ahead, find it, go ahead. Oh wait. It's called a promo, Shut kid, your and mouth, if you want John. to be the big dog, you're going to have to learn how to do it, so go ahead. See you, fourth wall! The reason why they boo you is because they see right through you. You're a phony. You're a yes man who can learn how to do anything or be anything. So if you wrap all that up, you're just a fake b****. Oh, we're talking now, ain't we? Yeah, you're hearing me now, ain't you? Not only that, He's a part-time and fake And I'll be damned if I don't bust my ass Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, every single week so you can hang out on the Today Show. Then jump on his big old bus and hell, maybe I'll come to a WWE show if they pay me enough. But what are you really gonna do, John? What are you gonna do, huh? You're gonna jump off that bus with that big shovel. That's what you're gonna do, and you're gonna bury as much young talent as you can. Because that's what you do, right? That's how you stay on top of the mountain. You'll do anything. You're just a backstabbing shark. But the thing is, the reason why you don't like me, what irritates you about me, you can't bury me, John. You can't touch me. Hell, I think this is fitting. I'm the one guy in the WWE that John Cena can't see. So now tell me this, why would I want to lessen myself, my legacy, my bloodline to be the next John Cena when I can be the one and only Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns is a damn fool. There's an old saying, it's better to keep your mouth shut and have people think you're stupid than to open and prove them right. You, of all people, you, Waltz down here and use the same pathetic excuse that every other single person before you has done. You, with all your gifts and all your opportunities, you have the gall to blame me. That's fine, that's fine, big dog. Congratulations, it took you five years to cut a halfway decent promo, but now I'm about to shrink you down to size. So everybody back there thinks I got this mythical golden shovel, that I got these magical powers that I can control everything and keep everybody's faith. Dude, I can't tell if you're blind or stupid. Look and listen. They hold the keys. They always have. They always will. But you got to blame me. Fine, I've been hearing that racket for 10 years and I ain't tired yet. I'm strong enough. I've been called a lot worse by a lot tougher. But you actually believe that I'm a shark, that I hold everybody down, that I swim to the top and keep them underwater at any and all costs. I'm a level with you, homie. I haven't main evented WrestleMania in five years. I was the opening match at SummerSlam. I was honored and privileged to earn the United States title at this stage in my career and use it as a beacon of opportunity to introduce 
new superstars to the WWE like Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, just to name a few. You took the U.S. title as a demotion. And you stand there and blame me. Fine, I blame you. I'm still here because you can't do your job. When it comes to this yard, you probably haven't learned it yet. There's only one rule, step up or step aside. And over the years, there's been a few to step up, but nobody to ever keep up. And then I finally hear about this one guy, the guy, the Roman Reigns, the one that can keep up. And now I look at you and I listen to you. You should be ashamed I'm a part-timer because I can do this part-time better than you could ever do it full-time. Well, there we go. There's uh, essentially 8 Mile 2 going on from Nashville this past Monday on Raw. And I have to admit, as, as this promo is being played, looking through the, uh, the window into the production room and seeing the reaction of Ted Efaw as he is hearing all this, uh, just, just the almost side-splitting laughter at some of the, uh, the, the back and forth there. Uh, as mentioned there, a lot of the breaking of the fourth wall, uh, talking about things like promos and, and, um, yeah, and, and just behind-the-scenes type things. And this is one of those things that has everybody talking to some degree. And the question is, well, where do they go from here? That's, I mean, the, the match is still three weeks away. You'd think that this would be something that they'd have at the go-home show to have everybody talking at a fevered pitch, but I almost feel like the apex has been hit a little early, and now what do you do for the next three weeks until the match happens? But, uh, I mean, certainly a lot mentioned in there, kind of touching upon why a lot of fans dislike both Roman Reigns and John Cena, and just kind of confronting the proverbial elephants in the room right off the bat and just throwing it out there to the audience. Like I said, good idea, maybe just uh, a little little too early, just a little too premature perhaps, because now, again, where do you where do you go for, from here? I, I, and I guess the other question is, do you even need to go this route? Like, is this, is this a way that you need to go to get the majority of the WWE universe hyped for this match, this, as they put it, WrestleMania quality match between Roman Reigns and John Cena, you know, the, the current guy versus the guy over the course of the last decade plus. And I don't know, you would think that it would just stand on its own in terms of merit. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a little bit, uh, maybe I'm a little bit old school, but I think that in this case, the breaking of the fourth wall, it almost, it felt like they were trying to recreate CM Punk from about six years ago, where uh, with the Indian style promo that man, this would be the perfect time for Twitch to chime in. But uh, he, at least I think, is on his way. But uh, time will tell on that. But we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll get your reactions as well to it. Uh, I've got some more news and notes to get into here. I figured that, that would just pretty much uh, absorb the first segment here, and uh, we'll get into a whole bunch more, including some uh, injury news. We'll update you on the uh, the Nature Boy and what he's got going on. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about this over the course of uh, the show a couple of times here. Uh, a programming note for next week. It's uh, huge for a couple of reasons next Saturday, September 9th. Uh, in terms of personal milestones, uh, this, this, this might have you scratching your heads a little bit. Next Saturday marks my 400th episode as host of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Yeah, who would have thought it's been uh, that long here? But even bigger than that, literally and figuratively, uh, next week I'll be interviewing Big Ron Shaw one of the carpenters of the World Wrestling Federation back in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, Ron has worked with Hall of Famers, including Andre the Giant, the Fabulous Freebirds, Jesse the Body Ventura, Pat Patterson, as well as legends like Rick Martel, Rene Goulet, B. Brian Blair, among many others. And he's got a lot of stories to tell, and uh, I mean, it's kind of an interesting look back at how things were back in that era, and I'm sure it might be a little bit of comparison of then and now with... I mean, it, it, it's hard to say where the conversation is going to go other than it's going to be uh, a lot of fun and uh, certainly educational as well. Edutaining, dare I say. You know, a little bit of education and a little bit of uh, entertainment in there as well. So I'm really looking forward to it and uh, uh, appreciate uh, a mutual friend of ours for uh, getting this together. Uh, my sister's friend, Thomas, who happens to be related to Ron Shaw. So a little plug there and 
I think he might be here in studio next week uh, with us. Thomas uh, will. Yeah, that Ron Shaw, uh, he'll be phoning in because he's uh, down in much warmer weather than we have here. That's for sure. What's up with that, Mother Nature? What's up with that? Oh, well, speaking of that, <laughs> that's, a, that's almost a great segue to get into here as, uh, well, there's a uh, stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. No, not Harvey. But we've already had to deal with that. This one's certainly uh, a lot less uh Physically devastating in terms of uh, cities, but the Hurricane Gregory Helms will be appearing at George's Cards and Collectibles in the Chamonix Mall location on Saturday, October 14th from 1 until 3 p.m. So you can give a listen to the show as you make your way on down there and uh, go check out Hurricane Helms, uh, Hurricane Gregory Helms. Uh, at George's Cards and Collectibles in Chamonix Mall. And George's has two locations for all of your cards and collectibles needs, including their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown and in the Chamonix Mall in the movie theater wing. For more information, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. Coming back, we're getting into more news and notes. We'll get into your reaction as well. You can Give us a buzz on the lines, 215-949-3232, or toll-free at 888-922-2149. That's uh, 888-WBCB-1490. Or you can chime in on the Facebook fan page, Pro Wrestling Weekly, on 1490 WBCB. Give us a like and a follow if you haven't already. And if you haven't, what's taking you so long? I mean, the show's only been on the air for 18 and a half years now. Granted, the page has only been around for a little bit, but... uh, that's because technology and I, we are not exactly the best of friends. And neither might Lucas and I if he doesn't show up here by the end of the... No, 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 no. That, that's kidding. Mostly. All right, we'll be back. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Next time you head down the shore, make Keenan's Irish Pub your favorite spot. Located in the heart of North Wildwood, Keenan's Irish Pub is 25,000 square feet of wall-to-wall fun. There's live entertainment seven days a week and an extensive menu that even features sushi. So grab a nice cold drink, listen to some live music, and enjoy a fantastic time at Keenan's Irish Pub. Keenan's is located at 113 Old New Jersey Avenue in North Wildwood, where all the neighborhoods still meet. Schedule a retirement planning strategy session with TFG Wealth Management. Mark Freed previews his technology others don't have access to and methods other professionals don't consider. Mark's maximum planning process takes you to and through a successful retirement. Call 866-296-8156. Mark Freed at TFG Wealth Management. That's 866-296-8156. Investment advisory services are offered by TFG Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm in the state of Pennsylvania. Insurance products and services are offered through the Freed Group. TFG Wealth Management, LLC and the Freed Group are affiliated companies. Hi, Merrill Reese inviting you to join Delco Times beat reporter Bob Groats and a different eagle each week for the Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA. Listen and watch our video stream on Facebook Live as we broadcast each week from a different Chickies and Peaks location near you and take a look deep inside the game. The Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA every Thursday night from 6 to 7 right here on 1490 WBCB and 610 Sports. Fire Financial Services can help you experience financial security through informed decision making. The advisors at Buyer help businesses and individuals with their retirement estate planning needs and employee benefits. Buyer, business, individual, retirement estate. Call 1-800-838-BIRE or 610-825-4066 to talk to a buyer representative so you can sleep well at night. Securities offered through Parkland Securities, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, branch office 4066, Butler Pike, Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania, 19462. Buyer Financial Services is not affiliated with Parkland Securities, LLC. Join former Phillies All-Stars Ricky Botalico and Tommy Green along with host John Brazier for the Baseball Insider Show presented by SEPTA immediately following Phillies baseball this Sunday right here on 1490 WBCB and video stream live at WBCB1490.com. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management.
Repairing or replacing the water or sewer lines on your property can be costly. BCWSA offers a low-cost maintenance program to protect the pipes that run from your home or business to the mains in the street. For as little as $5 a month for residential customers and $10 for commercial, you're covered. Some property contributions and exclusions apply. Go to bcwsa.bet for details or call 800-222-2068. Your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA, Rufin. See, oh, he's got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have I didn't it. give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-fabe. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we right. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Not even remotely fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here, flying solo, looks like for the remainder of the hour. Uh, But that doesn't mean that uh, can't have fun anyway, as we tend to do. So let's get into uh, some various news over the course of the week here. And uh, there certainly was quite a bit, including some breaking news from last night. John Bradshaw Layfield. Well, it looks like uh, he won't be (laughs) having fun on Tuesday night, Michael. No, that's right. John Bradshaw Layfield issuing a social media statement announcing that he is leaving the SmackDown broadcast team, uh, saying, quote, After much consideration, I will be stepping back my weekly role as SmackDown announcer to dedicate more continuous time on the work I have done since 2010 with at-risk kids and communities. My new schedule will allow me to continue to be a part of the WWE family and also continue my work that I feel is the most important thing in my life. I will continue my 20-plus year relationship with WWE and will appear on such marquee shows as Tribute to the Troops, WrestleMania, among others. With the help of Beyond Sport, I founded Beyond Rugby Bermuda in 2010, which has been recognized as one of the world's best charities for work with at-risk, gang-focused youth intervention. Beyond Rugby Bermuda won the 2014 NACRA Fair Play Award out of 7,000 programs and 17 countries for its work with at-risk kids. I was named as a Beyond Sport Global Ambassador, an organization backed by all major sports leagues in the U.S., I'm proud to say that in addition to being SmackDown's longest reigning WWE champion, I inspired WWE's tribute to the troops over 10 years ago. WWE has been my partner in all my philanthropic works, and this new deal with WWE ensures that will continue. WWE has made my dreams come true and helped me become a global name, and now WWE is helping me use that name to make a difference, end quote. No word yet on who will replace JBL's broadcast position, and... Yeah, it's crazy to think it has been over 20 years, uh, going back to the days of Justin Hawk Bradshaw uh, way back in the uh, the mid-90s and then transitioning to the uh, Acolytes and the APA, Acolyte Protection Agency, and then becoming John Bradshaw Layfield, uh, the uh, very pompous, uh, uh, rich Texan-type character that he's... Uh, it almost seems like a wrestling equivalent of J.R. Ewing, basically, was his uh, character for uh, quite a while. I know I'm dating myself with the Dallas reference, but it pretty much uh, fits accordingly here. But uh, some people have already been uh, clamoring uh, uh, on social media and otherwise of uh, bringing Mauro Ranallo back since the uh, alleged allegations were that uh, that JBL was uh, bullying Mauro Ranallo as uh, he was the play-by-play commentator, and that uh, the two had some friction, but Ronaldo's set with NXT, and that seems to be an agreement that works for both of them, so at this point, why, I don't know, why shake up the apple cart, especially if uh, it's working for all parties involved, and it's not like Ronaldo isn't, uh, you know, isn't doing good business, I mean, he uh, he even had the opportunity to call the uh, the big fight that I'm probably one of the few people that didn't care about last week, that uh, uh, Mayweather-McGregor fight. So yeah, I think he, I think he's doing all right for himself. Let's uh, let's not change things around here. I, and I know that I know that Mauro Ronaldo is very good. He is damn good, uh, and I think we're pretty much agreeing across the board with that. And it's one of those things where if you get too much of a good thing, the quality tends to dip. I found that out the hard way uh, recently, as uh, I've kind of uh, gotten a little 
too invested in too many things, and it uh, wore me a little thin. So now that I've stepped back a little bit, you notice I even sound slightly more energetic. I'm getting like three hours of sleep on a uh, Friday night into Saturday instead of two. So now I actually kind of know what the hell I'm doing, to use the, uh, the clip from the opener there. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's, I don't know. Are you going to miss JBL out there? I mean, he has been very contributory over the course of, as you said, the past uh, almost decade at this point uh, on commentary. Or at least it feels that way. Uh, yeah, that's right. He quit in 2009. So, yeah, maybe about seven, eight years or so. But, I don't know, maybe it'll be a refreshing change and a chance for somebody else to uh, to step in and step up as a color commentator. So we'll see where that goes. Speaking of uh, broadcast news here, uh, another WWE thing. Fox Sports Mexico, uh, along with WWE, announcing the launch of a new weekly Spanish-language show, WWE Saturday Night. Featuring the best action and family-friendly entertainment from WWE, and that actually starts tonight at 9 p.m. Central, because it considers uh, you know Mexico, Central America, etc. Uh, on uh, Fox Sports 2, uh, distributed throughout Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean, WWE Saturday Night will feature thrilling highlights and pivotal moments from WWE's flagship programs, Raw and SmackDown as well as WWE's premium live events, including WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and the Survivor Series, among others. WWE Saturday Night is presented by renowned Fox Sports Mexico broadcasters Veronica Rodriguez and Jimena Sanchez, and also includes exclusive interviews with WWE superstars and social media features, giving viewers in Latin America a unique, localized WWE experience. And additionally, WWE Saturday Night will be available on demand through the Fox app to authenticated Fox Sports subscribers. I think that's uh, not a bad move to kind of find a way to, uh, they mentioned their unique localized WWE experience as they continue to expand with access to the WWE Network, with all these different television deals in all these different countries there's got to be a way to kind of give your own local perspective and kind of branch out. I know we've talked about it in the past of the, the you know, gone are the jingoistic days where it's all about yay America, boo foreigners. I mean, it's, uh, well, I mean, maybe maybe in some sense it's not so much, but, uh, but Ted's whacking the finger in there. He's like, don't you go there. Don't you do it. I see where you're going. Don't do it. But, no, in terms of pro wrestling, this is not the, uh, the, the days of uh, the... 70s and early 80s, where you have uh, you know the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov running around, uh, you know, with Russia number one, Iran number one, USA, ach, tuh. like we're we're a long, far cry away from that. Even you know, I mean, now we're looking what 25 years ago now was uh, the uh, we'll, we'll we'll call it uh, commercialization rather than a, a different. Isation word that begins with a B that I was going to use that I didn't know if I could say or not. There you go. Put all that together of the uh, Persian Gulf conflict and having Sergeant Slaughter as the Iraqi sympathizer. I mean, and even to a degree of even though I, I think this is why we're not at that point anymore. You go back about what 13, 12, 13 years ago, where you had the character Muhammad Hassan who uh, was very polarizing not too far after the September 11th attacks, and that kind of backfired, and that pretty much drove him out of the business. So, I mean, we're, we've kind of gotten, at least I'd like to think we've gotten away from that, and then, of course, there was Battleground a month and a half ago, where there was a lot of yay USA, boo various foreigners, whether it was Rusev from Bulgaria, whether it was Jinder Mahal from India. So, I don't know. It almost seems like we or WWE, I should say, still has or is it trying to monetize or, or commercialize those jingoistic feelings that may or may not be there, and that could get into a whole nother discussion that probably would be better ser- served for Monday to Friday during this time slot, and we'll just uh, we'll leave it at that here before I uh, get into more trouble, because it's bound to happen. Yeah, I may not make it to 400 at this rate. We'll see. Ah, uh, but... Uh, well, somebody who's definitely made it in the uh, wrestling business and now is going to have a chance to uh, talk about it and then some in a, uh, in a written form. Uh, at the peak of wrestling's popularity, millions worldwide watched Al Snow stride into the ring each Monday night with the words, Help Me, scrawled backwards across his forehead. 
Now, after a 30-plus year career working for WWE, ECW, and TNA, he's no longer asking for help. He's offering it with his tongue planted firmly in his cheek. That's right. The book Self-Help, Life Lessons from the Bizarre Wrestling Career of Al Snow will be published by ECW Press, no relation to the wrestling company, in April 2019, and we'll see Snow in collaboration with Ross Owen Williams telling the story of his life, combining the highlights of his career with stories from the road that have given Al pause. And I'm sure he has uh, plenty of stories to go around. And uh, I can only imagine if there's going to be any uh, reverse ribbing or, uh, or or pranking or whatnot, as uh, Al Snow was the subject of a lot of uh, various jokes, ribs, and otherwise in the various autobiographical books of Mick Foley. Uh, that he, you know, He's become a New York Times bestseller. So maybe there'll be a little bit of retaliation. Who knows? Interestingly enough, uh, planned chapter titles include How Not to Train Dogs, not being in parentheses, How to Get into Films with the Mob, and How to Transport Naked Little People in a Big People Mover. So that alone, I mean, I'm, I, I can kind of tell where the How Not to Train Dogs story, I think that's probably going to involve the uh, the Kennel from Hell match with the uh, the big boss man and... Uh, Everything involved with that and the uh, the nightmare that was that match, where it was essentially a double cage match where you had uh, in in between the two cages a cage surrounding the the ring itself, and then you had a cage that had a little bit of room on the outside. Uh, almost, it's almost in a sense like a Punjabi prison match where you have the double cage, but in this case, it's. Uh, you had yeah, you had the uh, the cell on the outside, and in between you had various uh, Doberman dogs and whatnot. However, um, when the match had occurred, instead of the dogs being vicious and attacking, because you can control a lot of things, but you can't control animals on live television, as uh, many a game show and other things have proven, uh, the dogs instead of being vicious and attacking uh, were. Uh, leaving their marks in uh, various points throughout the ring and uh, also expressing interest in one another in a very uh, intimate fashion. So <laughs> that's, uh, oh man, that, that that's a fun match to go back and check out on the WWE Network. Just uh, look up Kennel from Hell match. Uh, uh, that, yeah, that didn't quite, oh man. It's definitely bringing me back in uh, in a dubious fashion to uh, to say the least. Uh, anyway, Williams, uh, that name may sound familiar, Ross Owen Williams. He previously co-wrote Bob Holly's autobiography, The Hardcore Truth, uh, released to universal acclaim back in 2013 by ECW Press. And that book went on to be named Best Wrestling Book of the Year by multiple websites and was voted runner-up in the Wrestling Observer Annual Awards. So there we go. Looking forward to, uh, to Al Snow's book uh, coming out in the spring of 2019, so uh, about a year and a half to, uh, to wait for that, but once we do, that'll be, uh, that'll be a lot of fun, and uh, eh, who knows what'll happen. Uh, maybe I can put in a good word, uh, since I'm friends with the, uh, the Blue Meanie, thanks to the Monster Factory, maybe we can see if we can get him on here. Why the heck not to have a chat about it? I'd uh, love to find out a little bit more about it. What, uh, when was that? It was, what, Unforgiven 99, I think, was the, uh, the Kennel from Hell match? As I'm quickly looking it up and talking at the same time because, uh, I don't know, research. Oh, yeah. Kennel from Hell match for the Hardcore Championship. That, uh, that classics. There you go. Look up Unforgiven 99 on the network and uh, feel free to have a laugh here on this Labor Day weekend. And uh, another way that you can have a laugh, well, today's a good day to uh, stock up for the holiday at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Where first, from now until 2 o'clock, they've got Bloody Mary flights on. Good way to start the weekend. And all day there's a Growler Fill special. $3 off of 64-ounce Growler Fills. Uh, as the Broken Goblet will be closed tomorrow for the uh, holiday weekend so the staff can spend the time with their friends and family for the weekend. But they're right back on Tuesday with 50 Cent Wings and Jackbox TV. Also coming up uh, three weeks away from uh, the, <laughs> on Saturday, September 23rd, the Broken Goblet teaming up with the Bucks County Speedsters for the first ever Beer Mile in Lower Bucks County. Drink, run, repeat. That's right. Full details, uh, it's pretty much uh, it's as it sounds. Uh, it's four quarter mile runs with a full beer in between each. And uh, think it sounds easy? Well, think again. 
don't know. I'll have to talk to El Jefe Roberto. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can make our way out there for that and uh, see what kind of uh, fun entertainment and debauchery could be involved. Although I don't think I'd be able to necessarily partake in the race, as uh, I'd have to be healthy enough to be able to do this show. So uh, time will tell on that. Also, Sunday, October 22nd, is another round of Yoga and Flights. Not too many tickets left, so you want to make sure you get yours. $15 gets a one-hour yoga class and a flight of the Broken Goblets Brews. Plus, it's been announced due to the Goblets' pending relocation. That's right, they're moving soon. So, Hoppy Halloween 4 has been postponed, but in its place, Hallow Weekends, featuring everything in October from a homebrew event, pumpkin carving, live bands, the freak show, costume, and entertainer show, as well as trick-or-treating and a whole bunch more. Plus, there'll be charity-themed events, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's all coming up in the month of October. Just a few reasons why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Please enjoy responsibly. Well, coming up, we've got uh, certainly some more news to get into, including... uh, very entertaining voiceover action that's uh, going to be going on uh, courtesy of YouTube, or at least YouTube Red, thanks to uh, yeah, thanks to a certain WWE champion. We'll let you know who that is and what they're going to be doing. Also, a uh, TV extension deal here in the U.S. We'll let you know about that, give you the update on Ric Flair's health. Also, uh, the a re- relative to a WWE wrestler uh, going to be uh, spending a little bit of time in the pokey. We'll tell you who and why coming up. And also... Well, a little bit of a change this past Monday on Raw for understandable reasons, but we'll uh, get into all that and a bunch more. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Hello, this is Vince Ceriani from Contour Mortgage and your host for Opening Doors to Real Estate and Finance. I'm inviting you to join me and my co-host, Gary Castle, broker owner of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Keystone Properties, every Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on 1490 WBCB, and also every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 610 Sports Radio. Opening Doors to Real Estate and Finance, helping you acquire your dream home. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Elegant ambiance, sophisticated decor, award-winning Italian cuisine and wine, Davio's Northern Italian Steakhouse. Located in the historic Provident Bank building in Center City, Davio's is a Best of Philly Award winner. Executive chef David Boyle creates seasonal dishes as well as signature favorites such as the Davio's Natural Prime Brand Beef Steaks, award-winning veal porterhouse, fresh seafood, and handmade pastas. Davio's, 111 South 17th Street in Philadelphia. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent flooding, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Are you curious what old antiques, collectibles, or household contents are worth? Listen Friday mornings from 9 to 10 a.m. for What's It Worth? with Mike the Appraiser, right here on 1490 WBCB. Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker asking you to join me and former Philly slugger Greg the Bull Luzinski for the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com. Every Monday, 6 to 7 p.m., we'll talk Phillies baseball with a different guest each week. 
Go to WBCB1490.com to check show locations and guest information each week. The Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com, every Monday at 6 p.m. on 1490 WBCB and 610 Sports. You need a plan as you get closer to retirement. A plan that will take you from where you are now to the retirement you've always dreamed about. The first step on that path is to tune into the What's Your Wealth Strategy Show with Mark Freed every Tuesday morning at 9.30. Mark is the president of TFG Wealth Management. You only retire once, but Mark helps people retire every day. Don't miss the What's Your Wealth Strategy Show with Mark Freed every Tuesday morning at 9.30 on WBCB 1490. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, September 2. On this date in 1992, WCW held its Clash of the Champions 20 Supercard. In the main event, Big Van Vader, Jake Roberts, Rick Rude, and the Super Invader defeated Nikita Koloff, Sting, and the Steiner Brothers in an eight-man elimination tag team match. On this date in 1996, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Chattanooga, Tennessee. In the main event, Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Steve McMichael, and Chris Benoit defeated Kevin Sullivan, Big Bubba, Meng, and the Barbarian in an eight-man tag team match. On this date in 2002, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In the main event, Ric Flair and Rob Van Dam defeated Chris Jericho and Triple H in a tag team match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, September 2. You are listening to Pro Wrestling Weekly with Ferran Derry. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you, flying solo, no sign of Hollywood Twitch DeSangro. Yeah, exactly. Oh, thank you for that, Mike Samsel. No, no, it... it Twitch not uh, not exactly Hollywooding it. Uh, no, he, he he did have some work obligations and uh, it's just it wasn't in the cards to be able to f- finish work at the time that he did and then make it up here with any semblance of time. Could call into the show, but mm, why do that? I don't know. A little snarky today. Let me let me get back to the news and notes here. Kind of settle things down here a little bit. On the it's probably because of this cold weather. I've been. Uh, griping about it for most of the morning here. Uh, doesn't feel very summerish here as it's only in the low to mid 60s. Uh, anyway, um, so according to Dave Meltzer, you know that name from WrestlingObserver.com, Global Force Wrestling's Impact Wrestling television show will remain on Pop TV through 2018. The company's previous deal with Pop ran through 2017. And Hopefully the uh, hopefully it's not an extension of the current deal, as I believe that was, for all intents and purposes, a, a trade agreement where there wasn't a whole lot of money changing hands in that regard, and at least in terms of uh, financing GFW going forward. But uh, eh, who knows? I, I guess Jeff Jarrett's got a plan, and he's uh, working on making it happen. At least uh, for his and the company's sake, I can certainly hope so. Uh, some good news, though, on uh, the Nature Boy front. Ric Flair's fiance, Wendy Barlow, you might remember her as uh, Fifi the Maid from back in 93. She provided the following update on Flair's condition on her Facebook page, saying, quote, He is doing very well for a man who has been through so much. He will begin physical therapy shortly and will be stronger than ever and back out enjoying all the fans sooner than you would think. Now, Flair's been hospitalized for the better part of the last uh, three weeks, with an undisclosed, uh, although there have been a lot of rumors flying about, uh, surgery that uh, that he had to deal with a few weeks ago. So there's been uh, certainly a flare scare, to say the least. And uh, we talked about it, uh, or at least I teased it uh, b- prior to the break here, but uh, YouTube Red continuing to add some of the biggest names in Hollywood to its all-star comedy roster, and... On a packed slate showcasing inventive new originals comes Dallas and Robo. It's a hilarious animated space adventure and buddy comedy from the producers behind Robot Chicken. You've seen that on Adult Swim. And if not, you definitely want to check it out. It's uh, some funny stuff, to say the least. But this series, the YouTube Red series, features the voices 
of 16-time WWE champion John Cena, as well as Kat Dennings from Two Broke Girls and Thor. Dallas and Robo centers around sassy space trucker Dallas, voiced by Dennings, and self-proclaimed warrior poet Robo, voiced by Cena. And they have to navigate their way around cannibal bikers, rival space truckers, and vending machine burritos as they try to make a buck in the seedy world of in- interplanetary big rigging. Man, it's like, uh, it's like Space Convoy or something like that. I don't know. Breaker 1-9 indeed. The eight-episode series will be produced by Shadow Machine of Robot Chicken and BoJack Horseman fame. The Dallas and Robo series will debut exclusively on YouTube Red in 2018. Also, yeah, I was going to say, from some funny news to some not-so-funny business, or actually very funny business, but not in the entertaining ha-ha kind of way, Donald Nemeth, the 30-year-old brother of WWE wrestler Dolph Ziggler, was sentenced on Monday to 15 years in prison in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Nemeth previously pleading guilty to involuntary manslaughter, kidnapping, and robbery charges relating to the shooting death of Joshua Maskell in January 2016. So a little bit of a rough go for uh, Dolph Ziggler's younger brother. And also, uh, looks like it's going to be a rough go, at least uh, not that rough, thankfully, but uh, for Samoa Joe, as he suffered a knee injury at a weekend live event, according to Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com, Joe expected to be sidelined for roughly four weeks. Oof. Yeah, injuries are rough. I'm quickly learning that myself here, as it looks like I'm going to be back on the shelf for a little while. Yeah, uh, apparently... Those who might have missed it uh, on social media, I was kind of absent from social media this week, but uh, finding out that uh, apparently there is, a, a after the surgery six plus months ago to handle uh, two hernias, apparently there is now a third one, this time on the right side, probably because it didn't have all the damage from before, so maybe that's why I've been salty uh, over the course of today, I don't know, maybe it's a combination of things, it's hard to say. He's a little, little bitter, a little salty. Uh, who knows? Also, uh, Jerry Lawler. Well, he filled in for Booker T this past Monday on Raw, and uh, kind of makes sense as to why. WWE.com noting that Booker was unable to travel to Memphis for the show due to the damage from Hurricane Harvey in his native Houston, Texas. Uh, WWE also announcing that production team members Jim Shank and Pat Cassidy uh, missed the show due to the weather issues. So... Hopefully they're uh, they're able to get things together out there, as that is a rough scenario down there in Texas with uh, with the the weather hurricane going uh, rolling through, as opposed to the uh, wrestler hurricane, which is obviously a lot more lighter spirited uh, than everything going on here. And also got to let you know that uh, coming up tonight. The MFPW returns to the world-famous Monster Factory at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey, and that's tonight for a Labor Day Bash, where you'll see Ring of Honor star Cheeseburger battle Soriano for the MF Live Championship. Also, Delirious faces LSG for the Supersonic Championship. Plus, you'll see the Money and the Miles put up their tag titles against the Kingdom. That's right, you'll see Taven, Marsalia, and TK Orion in the house tonight. Also, Mikey Webb defending the MFPW Heavyweight Championship against Maxwell Jacob Friedman, plus Sage Matthews challenges Punishment Martinez. All that and more tonight at the MFPW Arena, 541 Mancho Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Tickets, there are a select few. They are available now at eventbrite.com, and make sure to check out the MFPW and all things Monster Factory on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, plus at monsterfactory.org. And check out past matches, bios, bloopers, and more at themfnetwork.com. And themfnetwork.com is also where you can check out the Monday Night Monsters. That is the, uh, the essentially TV production that has been utilized, which tonight is a taping for Monday Night Monsters. So you will uh, be able to hear me on the call alongside Chaz Williams. Hmm, I'll have to see if we can get him on the show here at some point, maybe for a phone-in. There's a lot of things I need to see if I can do, and... Uh, and just slowly working on getting things together mentally. But a lot of that starts with next week. That's right, the big 4 0 for me here on Pro Wrestling Weekly. And big Ron Shaw, he's going to be joining us 
Uh, literally and figuratively, uh, it's going to be bigger than my 400th episode. Uh, but con- contained in it will be uh, will be Big Ron Shaw, one of the carpenters of the World Wrestling Federation from back in the late 70s and early 80s. He's worked with, uh, I mean, all kinds of uh, different wrestlers. Uh, able to check out uh, just just a select few of his uh, his matches. And I was going to say, it's a shame there wasn't as, uh, as much tape and able to record things as uh, I'm, I'm sure some of the matches that uh, I haven't seen are uh, certainly there's a lot of stories behind him, but he'd, he'd be the person to tell those stories as he was there for all of them. But uh, I mean, working with uh, hall of fame wrestlers like the, the fabulous Freebirds uh, in their debut match in the world wrestling federation uh, back in 1984 uh, wrestling against Jesse, the body Ventura, Pat Patterson, Andre, the giant uh, legends like uh, Rick Martel before he was the, the model uh, Rene Goulet, uh, Big uh, underground, uh, well, I'm a big underground fan of his, as is uh, Lucas here, thanks to the folks over at OSW Review. A little Wurzel Gummage plug there. As well as B. Brian Blair and many others. So uh, looking forward to hearing some stories and, uh, and, and talking with Big Ron Shaw and uh, looking back at a, uh, a, a simpler time, a different time, and uh, kind of seeing... What, uh, yes, <laughs> here I'm, I'm just intrigued by the by the stories. Well, I mean, I'm intrigued by everything, but yeah, the stories that there are to tell, what it's like working with these. I'm going to try not to do the Chris Farley, yeah, you remember when this thing, that was awesome. You know, I'm going to try not to do that like he did with, uh, was it Paul McCartney, I think, on Saturday Night Live? Okay, Ted's giving me the thumbs up on that one. I don't know, I was a wee lad when that, uh, okay. Uh, I don't, Ted's out there going, come on, you're making me feel old here. <laughs> Oh, he said, I am old. Okay, well, you're as young as you feel. So that's why, I, that's why I'm being a jerk for, well, unintentionally being a jerk for making you feel old, even though you're not, uh, you are you feel, uh, I'm not going to, I'm taking over for Twitch. He's usually the one that digs these verbal holes. Since he isn't here, I guess I'm, I'm doing it for him. I don't know. Oh, goodness. You know what? I, I've got a good way to get out of this. Probably one of the best ways I can think of here, especially because we've got, uh, Quite a few of these to get into, so uh, I think it's just about time for... Birthdays! You jerk. Oh, yeah, and we've got plenty to go through today. I've got, goodness, one, two, three, four, five wrestling-related birthdays, and then five Brucey bonuses as well. So it's a good thing, yeah, it's a, a ten-pack here for the holiday weekend. All right, firstly, on this date in 1960, Todd Bradford was born... The former WCW United States Tag Team Champion, better known as Todd Champion, one half of the Patriots alongside Firebreaker Chip, yeah, you remember him, turns 57 today. Also, on this date in 1962, Tracy Stanton Smothers was born. The former WWF, WCW, ECW, and TNA competitor, also known as Freddie Joe Floyd, but best known as Tracy Smothers, turns 55 today. Let's get this in here, too. There we go. We're hitting the end here. Get the uh, the theme rolling out here. On this date in 1965, Lennis Claudius Lewis was born, the three-time world heavyweight boxing champion and Olympic gold medalist who accompanied the British Bulldogs to ringside at SummerSlam 1992 in London, England. Turns 52 today. On this date in 1969, Joseph Edward Hitchin was born, the former WWF and TNA wrestler and former NWA World Tag Team Champion, better known as Joe E. Legend, turns 48 today. And uh, I had to throw this one in. On this date in 1971, Thomas Alfred Maddox was born, the former football quarterback who was the league MVP and one of three players to have won both a Super Bowl and an XFL championship. Yes, for the one year that the XFL was a thing, courtesy of Vince McMahon, he turns 46 today. So I believe he won one with the Steelers back in the mid-2000s. And now to the Brucey bonuses. And boy, are there a lot of them. On this date in 1948, Terry Paxton Bradshaw was born. The Pro Football Hall of Fame quarterback, four-time Super Bowl champion, and longtime NFL analyst turns 69 wonderful years today. Uh, and a country singer, too. That's right, of course. Can't forget that. On this date in 1951, Thomas Mark Harmon was born. The actor best known for his longtime role as Special Agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs on the TV series NCIS turned 66 today. Ricky yeah, Ricky Nelson's ex-brother-in-law, too. On this date in 1964, Keanu Charles Reeves was born. 
The actor from blockbuster films including the Bill and Ted movies, Point Break, Speed, The Matrix movies, and the John Wick movies, among many others, turns 53 today. On this date in 1979, Brian Collins Westbrook was born. The two-time Pro Bowl running back for the Philadelphia Eagles turns 38 today. And speaking of the Eagles, on this date in 19... Merrill Reese was born, the longtime radio play-by-play voice of the Eagles and co-owner, vice president, and general manager here at WBCB turns today. Yeah, I'm not saying it because I don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, that's going to do it for me here. Stay tuned. Ted Efaw is next with the Country Road Show. Country music the way it used to be, the way it ought to be. And until next week, play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock in old Wales. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBCB.